Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at another repair. So in this case it's the Mesa 525. The customer originally bought this in Hong Kong when they used to live there. So it is the export version which runs off of the 220 to 240 VAC. Um, now that they live in the States though, they wanted it to work with our wall voltage, the 120. So to make that voltage conversion from the 230 to 120, we can either do a step-up transformer that's external to the amp, or we could um, see if Mesa still has the original uh, domestic primary in stock, and then we can do a, a complete swap of the power transformer. Um, most amps, they'll actually give you the taps you need on the primary side to wire it for whatever country you're in. In this case, Mesa has dedicated transformers, one for domestic and one for export. So to give you a better idea of what we're looking at, we can switch over to the schematic here. So on the top, you can see the 120 VAC domestic primary, and that's part number 561830. And then what we have in this amp right now is 561831, the export primary. So when I first used a step-up transformer, and I powered the amp up. I did get, you know, pilot lights, everything on. I got sound for a little while. And then shortly after that, it started smoking. So some component in there released the magic smoke. I didn't get that on camera. But what I ended up finding out is that it's a pretty common problem with these Mesa boogies. So it's actually in the heater supply, C36. That's what went up in smoke on the first proper wall voltage power up. And that is in the regulated supply. So it's a regulated 12 volts. There's the 7812, which is the linear voltage regulator. And then there's that big um, 6800 microfarad 25 volt C50 cap on the input. So that's sort of like your reservoir cap. And then the C36 is what's shorted. So in the board, you can see that yellow tantalum right there. Is completely burned out and it kind of ejected a bunch of stuff everywhere that is C36 and I'm not the only one with this issue you can look at Brad's guitar garage he's done repairs of that exact same tantalum capacitor that failed in the exact same way and then here's another one right I think this is um, Lyle from psionic audio exact same component exact same failure so it wasn't just me using the step-up transformer is actually a pretty common failure point for these Mesa amps and in this video, we're going to repair this whole heater section. So the first step is getting that component out of there. And just to show you why it started smoking, we can actually do a, a continuity test on it. Because um, some components, when they fail, right, they'll go open, which is actually kind of nice in some cases. But this tantalum, it's a dead short. And so if you have a dead short on your heater supply, all that current is rushing through that component and being dumped to ground. So I'm first going to take that component out. I'm going to clean the area, desolder everything. And what I really want to do is not just replace that component, but kind of everything in that sub circuit. In this case, I am going to remove C50 and the linear voltage regulator. So we're going to replace those three components so that we have a healthy 12 volt heater supply. They use a screw with no nut. It just goes right into the um, PCB. They've kind of got a pad on there for the heat sink. Um, I like to use a, a bar of copper just to not rip up any pads and you can kind of easily desolder the whole component. And then every time you see a Q-tip, I'm just using um, isopropanol, like rubbing alcohol basically, to kind of clean up the flux from my solder and get everything clean. The solder wick I use, that uh, braided copper, the company I believe is Chemtronics. I've tried a bunch of different solder wicks and none of them are as good as the Chemtronics brand. I think they have some extra flux in there that helps wick everything away. So now we're going to solder back in the L812, that linear voltage regulator. And then instead of putting a 
tantalum capacitor in this position again, we're going to go for um, just a regular electrolytic capacitor. So the difficult part about working on these mesas is unless you want to basically deconstruct everything, it is very difficult to get to the underside of the board. So that's why you see me installing this with, you know, the legs kind of sticking up in the air there. That way I still have clearance to solder underneath it. So this is after I've replaced all three of those components. We checked on the meter that we've got our 11.8 or 12 volts on the amp. And then the last thing I'm just going to do just to kind of help both channels out is run some deoxid on all the pots and sliders. Um, I don't know how old this amp is, but it definitely had some grime in some of the pots and the deoxid helps loosen that up. And here's the first power up. We've got power, so everything's good there. Wait a little bit and then I'll flick the standby switch. extra little bit of buzz you hear is that's actually from my guitar it's a Hagstrom Swede with um, some noisy P90s in there but yeah the amps back to full health um, really all it needed was that step up transformer to get the the voltages where they should have been but I'm glad that that component failed because I didn't know about that common failure point so I'm glad we've got the the heater circuit figured out there's still a lot of other tantalums in there but that's just how Mesa Boogie made their amps but in the most critical spots like the heaters, I'm glad that, you know, we kind of cleared that up. So, yeah, thanks for watching and see ya.